In 1964, Astro Boy took American audiences by storm and sparked a Western fascination for Eastern animation. Since then, there's been one studio that has done more to bring anime to the American mainstream than any other, and it's Studio Ghibli. Many Studio Ghibli films feature gemstones as key plot points, but today we're gonna take a look at the film that started it all, Castle in the Sky. Castle in the Sky is the 1986 Hayao Miyazaki film about two kids named Pazu and Shita and their quest to find Laputa, the legendary castle in the sky, which is also the name of the famous floating island in Gulliver's Travels, written by Jonathan Swift over 250 years prior. The film is a mysterious and fun-filled adventure, and while the crystals in it may be based in magic and fantasy, there are some gems in real life that share some of the same properties as Shita's mysterious crystals. One of the coolest things that the crystals in Laputa can do is levitate things. In the beginning of the movie, we see Sheeta's life saved by her crystal, as its levitative powers provide her with a controlled descent from the sky, instead of a deadly fall. Later, we see this power on a much larger scale, as a huge crystal is used to levitate an entire castle. I know what you're thinking, Natalie. There's no way a rock can levitate somebody through the air, let alone a whole castle. And you'd be right, it actually would be impossible. I'm not a mathematician, nor paid enough to crunch the numbers on this one, but you'd need to generate a magnetic field powerful enough to lift millions upon millions of tons, and no one rock is gonna do that. Don't be discouraged though, levitation is still possible with natural gemstones in our world, just on a much smaller scale. In the movie they use a crystal called Volusite, but all you need here on Earth are bismuth and graphite, as both of them possess diamagnetic properties. A diamagnetic material is something that can have a magnetic field induced in it, repelling the original field. Think of how an iron nail gets attracted and pulled to a magnet. A diamagnetic material tries to push the magnet away. So if you put a magnet or something that creates its own magnetic field between two diamagnetic materials like bismuth, those two materials will generate an induced mirrored field that repels the magnet from either side. In order to achieve a true state of equilibrium, you need a larger magnet above the whole system to really balance it out. Basically make a bismuth sandwich with a magnet in the middle and a big old stuffed olive magnet on a toothpick above it all. And the whole system should balance out. Yay, science. However, these forces are extremely weak and could never create enough force to levitate a castle, but it's still a pretty cool trick. Another fascinating aspect of Sheeta's crystal is its ability to glow. Good news, there are plenty of gemstones on our Earth that luminesce through one means or another. Some rocks take energy from either the light of the sun or the breaking of chemical bonds. Click here for more about that phenomenon. Others just re-emit previously absorbed electromagnetic radiation. Diamonds can have a blue fluorescence and they can also phosphoresce. The Hope Diamond is famous for this phenomenon. Myanmar ruby, quartz, and bonitoite can also luminesce. Some fluorite, especially chlorophane, will luminesce simply from the heat of one's hand. So it's not too off the mark to say that Sheeta's crystal could be emitting light from her hand's warmth, or even the breakdown of chemical bonds. Who knew that Sheeta's crystal possessed some real world qualities to them? Do you want to hear about Howl's heart from Howl's Moving Castle? Or maybe Princess Mononoke's necklace? Let us know, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thanks for watching.